When we look at the U.S. dollar, our, our view for the next 6 to 12 months is that it will gravitate lower. Uh, the fundamentals, uh, even though the U.S. economy is the strongest in the world, we do feel that over the next 6 to 12 months, maybe a little bit longer, that the rest of the world will catch up relative uh, to the U.S., maybe not the same growth, but relative, uh, that that growth differential will narrow. Uh, as such, we do feel that the dollar will start, uh, we think, a secular decline of between uh, probably three and a half to uh, five years. Uh, when we look at the, the currencies around the world, we find uh, developed currencies and emerging market currencies as attractive. And here are the examples. Uh, we do like the Canadian dollar. Uh, we do feel it's weakened up because uh, of their interest rate policy lagging the U.S. Uh, but we do, as the U.S. has still grown, it's going to drag Canada, we think, pretty positively. Uh, so Canada, we think, is going to be strengthening. So we will pay, play some of our Canadian positions unhedged. As we look at the emerging market uh, currencies, uh, we do like Indonesia. Uh, we do like Malaysia. Uh, we do like Brazil and Mexico. Uh, we're getting yields between 5 and 8% respectively in each of these countries. We have, I think, credit upgrades in those countries. Uh, and I think you're going to earn uh, in three ways. One, you're going to get yield. Two, you'll get currency appreciation. And then three, you could get some uh, movement in the bond price from a credit improvement. Uh, emerging market debt, uh, you know, when you broad brush it, I think has some risk inherent, but I think you have to be very selective on, especially when you're looking at specific bonds. Uh, countries that are off limits to us are Argentina, Venezuela, uh, South Africa, and Turkey. Uh, we think in this environment with rising rates, those type of countries will lose on both currency and on, on the bond price. Uh, they run current account deficits, they have political instability, uh, and it really is hard to get a handle or an edge on those. So we're going to avoid those, but we do think that emerging markets selected uh, make sense. Uh, and again, uh, I'll highlight Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, Brazil, and Mexico, and to a lesser extent, Colombia. Uh, we do think that uh, these economies are going to do well over time, and you're getting paid for the risk, and we do think there's some currency uh, appreciation also. Well, when we look at asset allocation and currency on our performance, we'll talk currency first. Uh, we did dip our toes into going into emerging markets at the end of the first quarter into the second quarter, probably a little bit early uh, because we had, you know, the Brexit situation, the Italy situation, and then you know, Trump's, uh, you know, situation with the China trade. So that tariff situation put a lot of volatility in some of those currencies. So that was a, a headwind for us in the, in the first uh, probably six to eight months of the year. Uh, so that was a negative detractor. From an asset allocation standpoint, I think some of our exposure to emerging market bonds, uh, you did have a decline in price, but we think that's temporary. Uh, so that was a detractor. Uh, in the short run. Our short duration was a, a positive because interest rates during that period went up. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, from a, a credit standpoint, a high yield and to a lesser extent, some of our investment grade credit situation were more of a carry positive uh, in that environment. 